where we are. Maybe it's not all bad. I don't see any new promise, at least. We are an empty eternal echo. Naked nothingness. Not helping. Oh, wizard. All right, everyone just split up and look for a way out. Or forward, or whatever. I lose a bet if I die in a dark pit. Drax! Come on, buddy. I know you can hear me. This ain't flarkin' funny. I know you're in a dark place right now. Literally. But we're not gonna give up. Just point us in the right direction. Hmm. There! Look! I can't believe that worked. Let's go. Part of him is still with us, I'm sure of it. I hope you've got one hell of a speech plan, Peter. That makes two of us. Why are you doing this? Do not leave me be. You gotta trust us, Drax. We're trying to help. By destroying my home. Your blissful ignorance is an ignoble pursuit. Easy, Shakespeare. You got this. Come on. You don't really want to stay in this dark hole? I would endure the depths of Sarduth to be with my family. Drag, love. It is time to eat. Special. They are the only thing that matters. My Hovat was the most fearless mate I have ever known. She brought me peace even during times of war. My Camaria. My innocent little Camaria. She was the best of us both. Despite her meager stature, they both were. They were. They were. Will. My family is gone. What sits before me? I don't know. But it's not real. It ain't good. It is a perversion, fed by desperation. Without it, I will have nothing. I cannot be alone again. You're not alone, man. We're here for you. We've all lost someone, Drax. But it gets easier if you surround yourself with the right people. I am Groot. Uh, Groot said some mushy stuff. Let's just pretend I said it too. We're a team. Papa? Are you okay? Join us, Drax. Are you hurt, Papa? Talk to us, love. cherish the time that we had, and not resent the time that we lost. <gasps> Shall love 
and honor you both. Always. How you doing, big guy? You okay? I am of sound mind, thanks to you all. I owe amends for my lapse in judgment. Hey, you don't owe us squat. Ain't none of us perfect. It's kind of our thing. <laughs> How much do you remember? Great darkness grew with every lie that I swallowed. The longer I remained with my family, the more certain I became that I could never leave. Peter Quill. Your child is in danger. If her pain is half of my own, the darkness may consume her entirely. Not if I can help it. We gotta be smart about this. There's a whole lot of converted between us and her. A whole lot of that black blorf, too. And anyone wanna tell me why Harry Hobo was able to suck it up? More than why that thing looked like him. Because it is me. Oh yes, there's his, uh, outfit. Time to go! <laughs> hey, Goldie! All right, what do we got here? Hmm. Braun! Want to get back here and explain that bombshell? Time is tight and your understanding unimportant. Can I shoot him? Come on, <laughs> let me shoot him. Hey, we're in this together and Smart Money says it's gonna be a tough fight. Imagine ambivalent omnipotence drifting in darkness. Uh, speaking of dark... Such was my celestial solitude. Power without purpose, until uncovered by Raker. His crew were convalescent. Plagued by a pox, I was serendipitously suited to soothe. A ship full of sick people just happens upon someone with limitless healing? We were need and needed, symptom and solace. They worshipped the wonder of my ways and declared me divine. I think we know where this is going. I do not know where this is going. <laughs> As the flock of followers fawned, a dark delight developed deep within me. And in the shadows it spoke. Weak whelps, pernicious priesting, feeble fools, fit for feasting. Hubris made hunger. A cancerous craving called Magus. Hang on. You can't name a craving. I named nothing. Clawed through my consciousness. Its deafening demands sated solely by suffering. 
Did you listen to this thing? Its call is too great to ignore. I too heard this voice. It was pure putrefaction, sown from the seed of my strength. My soul stone gone sour. I resolved to rip it out. Rip it out? How? A mechanical marvel wrought by Raker would sever the stone from my skull and excise the evil entangled within. Translation, you let Raker steal your powers. Whatever his wayward wander, he was on that day my friend. He swore to separate sanctity from sin, that my healing could yet be harnessed without harm. Sure, but who's harnessing it? Sounds like you were careless. Deluded by desperation. My mind was melding with Magus. Did it work at least? In a savage sense. It split my soul in twain and cast us to the cosmos. So, no. For me, there was only darkness. I awoke half whole, certain the stone shattered. How Magus merged with another, I know not. I think I can answer that. After I rejected my promise, I got pulled into Nikki's. Corral was there. She was trying to show me something. Peter, you can't trust anything you saw in there. This was different, and it felt different. She took me back to the QZ, and I saw that Magus thing. I saw it get all twisted up with Nikki, and I... I saw it kill Corral. You hear yourself? How'd she show you this if she's dead? Quite conceivable. Her soul may be snared by the stone, chained to the child. That's what Corell said. The three of them are somehow connected. She said Nikki needs to accept her death. Magus preys upon her pain, manipulates her mind while feeding on her flock of followers. And I'm guessing it never gets full. Its appetite is insatiable. If unassailed, Magus will absorb all. We're gonna need one hell of a plan. Well, you better come up with it quick, because I see daylight. The bond between Magus and Matriarch must be broken. It harvests its hunger through the host. So... Nikki's like the head vampire. If we cure her, it'll free the rest. Why didn't you just say that? So step one. Find Nikki. Step two, convince her mom ain't coming back from the dead. Step three, get that stone away from her and mop the floor with that Magus thing. You show no shortage of assurance. Yeah, this one's Mr. Positivity. It's enough to make you sick. The stone is both bondage and bridge for Magus, and a young mind is most malleable. If Magus is merged with her, she may not survive the severing. We won't let it come to that. Not to join the Golden Downer, but how are we supposed to find the kid? What are you... Oh, What's going... Flark. Oh, Flark. That's not good. They've got the Cortex. They can go anywhere, convert anyone. Jesus, chapter 12 already. Dang. You need to go now. Why does that sound like you're not coming with us? These are my people. Some still survive if I stay. Then we'll stay and help. Go. I'll be where I'm needed when I need to be. Dang. Just trust me. Don't go dying. I'm starting to actually get you. <laughs> Mind over matter.
There's the Larma. You wanna pop a squat, golden boy? You're making me nervous. Or perhaps <laughs> your nerves need gnawing. What did I do? This precarious plan proves more meek by the moment. The Madonna was meant to be among us. She knows what she's doing. Eventually. What sorry sins I have wrought to rest me among such a motley crew. Did he? Did he take my room? <laughs> Not so much as a yip from the mud. Groot says he'll keep trying. Where's Mr. Fancy Words? It is assumed Peter Quill's quarters. It was a daring display of dominance. Don't you start. <laughs> Usually I'd say who needs him, but we do. So you better fix this one, Quill. Just try not to piss him off any more than he already is. If it is to be a fight to the death, I will honor the outcome. If he kills you, I get your guns. <laughs> oh my god. Oh boy. Wouldn't bet on Peter winning that fight. Took all five of us to beat him last time. I still can't believe he caught one of my smart bombs. Just like that. We have already fought the man. Hold on. You don't remember? I remember sparring against the Celestial Madonna in a small village. And in the cold darkness of the promise devouring my soul. Until you found me. Yeah, you missed a lot. Did you reach Cosmo? It may be up to us to stop the church in nowhere. You ready? I am Groot. He's worried about the mutt. Says it would be easier with his help. I didn't think Cosmo would let the church take over his station. But if they got the Cortex, then... He is but one canine against the army of the Converted. I take it Groot didn't reach Cosmo? No dice. The tree is persistent. He will keep trying. He was the most convinced we could bring you back, you know. I don't know if it's optimism or stubbornness, but it works for him. Moore, are you okay letting Mantis fight the church alone out there? She won't fight. She'll focus on evacuating people. Maybe they can all hide in the caves. So she's just gonna let the church take over her home world? Mantis would tell you that people matter more than the planet. And she knows that the church won't stop coming until we rescue Nikki. You have great confidence in this celestial Madonna. She's one of the few people I know I can trust. Really? She freaks me out. Because she's smarter than you? And kinder. <laughs> hey, that nickname makes my skin crawl. I'm furry, not fuzzy. Not even that little. <laughs> a little fuzzy. <laughs> Glad you're back on our side, Drax. I got a feeling we'll need to go full destroyer on this one. I shall be ready, Peter Quill. I have witnessed the threat posed by Magus firsthand. No one should suffer from its malignant lies. I owe all of you a great debt of gratitude. It would be my honor to fight beside you with all of my might. That's a lot of might. <laughs> Groot agrees with you, Muscles. Sounds like we've got ourselves a nice church butt-kicking party. I only hope our guest agrees to join this buttock-striking celebration. <laughs> Jesus Christ. He's so literal. It's fantastic. Just, oh yeah. Did you just... You have closed the refrigerator door. Yeah, I do that sometimes. I thought I was the only one who ever bothered. I thought I was the only one. I observed the tree closing at once. <laughs> yeah. I am optimistic about Peter Quill convincing our guest to fight alongside us. Of course you'd be optimistic. You're always optimistic. Optimism or not, we need to work with him. We need someone strong enough to keep Raker in check if we want any chance to get to Nikki. <sighs> My shoulders are sore. Yeah, Mantis is heavier than she looks. How is she connected with my soreness? <laughs> she rode your back all the way down the caves to Goldie's place? Really? Oh my god. 
<laughs> Rodent. You mentioned the Madonna riding my shoulders through the caves. <laughs> no. I don't think that's where Golden Boy went to. He's in your cabin if you're looking for him, Peter. I know. I know. I uh, I met I ended up I loop the loop stayed on Lamentus. My ears were ringing from all her nonsense. I prefer <laughs> Mantis's nonsense to warlocks. The golden man is perfectly intelligible. Sure, his words make sense. Hey, that one's from Lamentus. Does that mean it's a sacred plant? Groot, did you steal a sacred plant from Lamentus? <laughs> Would a wanton hand supply sustenance to this chamber? He's asking <laughs> for room service now. Come get your own. We've got a full fridge. Well, not exactly full. <laughs> So, talk oh, there we go. he's something. Eh, not sure we can trust the guy who looked at the grand unicorn himself and thought, the lad looks like a reliable rascal. He simply knows that the true <laughs> evil is Magus. Raker is but an impressionable fanatic. A fanatic with a lot of firepower. All right. Sometimes I like to just wait around and see what they're going to say. I'd like to wait around sometimes to just like see what else they're gonna talk about. That's that's why you always see me wait around a lot, just because I know they're gonna say something. Hey, Quill, you seem like you're in a good mood. Huh. Do I? I've got a great idea for a new blaster extension. Can't wait to put it together. Hmm. <laughs> well, now that the gang's back together and we've got a minute to breathe. I think you deserve an official thank you for what you did on Lamentus. <laughs> Quill, I, uh... I know you don't like that kind of sappy stuff, but I really mean it. Knowing about the crap those scientists did to you, not only does it make my blood boil, it puts everything into perspective. Oh, come on, it was just a puddle. I don't know if I could have gotten over something like that. You saved our lives, man. You deserve a bit of praise. The rodents saved your lives, and scientists were involved. I have many questions. Yeah, we'll <laughs> save them for the next time we all get a drink together, buddy. <laughs> what will it be this time? Confetti jet boots? All right, what we got, what we got, what we got? It's the most expensive. Well, these are right now. Quickly in combat. One shiny upgrade, nice and crafted. N O P E. Nope. <laughs> cool. So I only have three left. Sweet. I don't. I wonder. I'm hoping I can get them. I've made it foolproof, just for you. Let the waves of calm. Oh, Gamora! Since when do you yes. meditate? I don't, but desperate times and all. Stuff's been a lot lately. I get it. Hala, help me. Do I get it? Uh, so, how do you use this then? In, in case you know, Rocket asks. Well, for one, it isn't about just holding it. You also need a comfortable place to sit, where you can be relaxed but alert, and focus on your breathing. Then you practice. A lot. <laughs> yeah. That sounds like a lot more work than I was hoping for. Anything worth doing tends to be. So how do you do it? Focus was something Thanos beat into us early on. But it wasn't until I lived with the priests of Palma that I realized how... 
limited his version of meditation really was. How did you end up living with the priests of Palma? They're not exactly your kind of crowd with the whole pacifism thing. Mantis introduced me to them last year, when I needed to heal. They helped me in ways I didn't think were possible. Helped? How? I guess you could say I was broken. Thanos, the war, working as an assassin, it'd take a toll on you. By the time Mantis brought me there, I was ready to give up. I mean, I was miserable. Convinced I was beyond redemption or worth, I truly believed I deserved to die. But you didn't. Die? No. There was this... boy there. A con. The one you hugged in the village. A con was like me. Lost. His parents had died in an accident. He was combative, rebellious, the opposite of a pacifist. <laughs> the priest thought it would be a good idea for both of us to work through our scut together. <laughs> and was it? <laughs> At first, not really. He was a pain in the butt. But over time, we came to rely on each other. Thanos had taught me how to meditate in the functional sense, but not in the spiritual sense. Like, how to work through my trauma. Caring for a con, it... He forced me to reflect and process. And together, through mutual support, a con and I were able to overcome our demons. Hmm. I can't picture Thanos meditating. I kind of always figured he was this egotistical tyrant. No, oh, he totally was. But Thanos also understood that aspects of meditation could be useful to his cause. Like focus? Focus, increasing overall awareness, pain tolerance. He came up with a series of exercises, fun little games for me and Nebula to compete in as part of our training. The worst part was, we didn't even know what he was doing until it was too late. What do you mean? Thanos' brand of meditation warped us turned us into hyper-focused weapons. That way we were numb to the horrors of his agenda. Killing people. Assassination is just a different name for murder. So how did you cope? We made puns. Bad, stupid jokes to shout as we were. Killing people. The more terrible, the better. Here, I thought you just had a really lame sense of humor. Oh, I do. But it was the only way to survive. And it was something we did together, a new kind of competition, just between me and Nebula, to see who can make the other laugh. That's really messed up, and yet oddly endearing. Yeah, well, even bad puns can only get you so far before your conscience catches up with you. Wow, I had no idea meditation could be so intense. Or beneficial? Well, yeah, that too. I guess I should give it a go sometime. Although I'm kind of scared of what I'll find. Who knows? You might surprise yourself. I know I did. Yeah. Maybe. Gamora's so patient with us. Yeah, because he she, she, she probably would have tore your fucking heads off before. I'm glad to call you a friend, Gamora. Damn straight. Huh. Oh, he didn't light it. Peter Quill, I did not expect to find you in here. Ah! Hey, sorry. I didn't mean to. It is fine. Your company is always welcome. And thank you for the gift. Oh, uh, yeah. Sure. Figured you might want to light it from time to time in memory of your family. 
Why would a lit candle remind me of my family? Every memory I have of them has been carved into my flesh. You... What? The red scars that I bear. They are a record of every great deed, an important milestone in my life. Oh. Well, I just thought it was because they look cool. No, Peter Quill. On Katath, we practice scarification, so that there is a record, proof, that one is worthy to enter Ultath. Such a record is required for judgment in the afterlife. Huh. That's awesome. It's funny though, I mean, I did, I obviously knew, well, for those of you that don't know, no judgment, you know, no judgment, but, yeah, that's, that's what his, uh, scars are. Yeah, sure, they look cool, but, what Drax said, he put it, in, he, he put it into better words than I could, and, uh, I don't know, I, I've always thought that was really cool, um, and just very wholesome, uh, knowing that Drax's tattoos are just scars and, you know, reminders of his good deeds and, like, like exactly what he mentioned, you know? I've always thought that was cool. So, your tattoos are actually a record of your life that's been carved into your skin? Yes. The process is known as the Jiltara and is extremely painful. It requires focus and self-control and occurs many times in a Katathian's life. No offense, Drax, but they just look like a bunch of swirly lines. Perhaps to you. To me, they are the most important moments of my life. Each line is composed of a thousand scars, each engraved with the tooth of a walnut creature. What kind of moments get recorded? Kill counts? <laughs> Stuff like that? No, Peter Quill. A Katathian life record is a record of just that. Major milestones and important events. Like the day I became a man. Gross. <laughs> the day that Hovat accepted my proposal of marriage. His reaction. And later the marriage ceremony itself. And the day that Hovat gave birth to my daughter, Camaria. And the day that I lost them both. Now I see why they're scars. Yes. Once I believed my failure to avenge their deaths had banished us all to Sarduth. But now, thanks to you and the others, I see a deeper truth. Life does not have meaning without suffering as well. Mm, yeah. So, hypothetically speaking, if you died tomorrow, what would happen? My Cho Tak. My life essence would travel to the gates of Ultath. There I will be judged by the great kings and queens of ages past. And if deemed worthy, the gates will open. And if you're not, you know, worthy? The gates do not open. And... I am cast into Sarduth, where I will cease to exist. Yeah. I guess that's bad. So, like, how do these kings and queens know if you're worthy? By reading the scars that make up my life record. From that, they will judge whether I 